Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about The Cat Returns, which was a random choice, kind of sort of, maybe, kind of sort of was a random choice. Uh, but before that, we were just honestly just having a good time, not really talking about anything in particular in our pre show. But if you're wanting to check us out, or join us, you can always do so. Uh, you can join us at twitch.tv slash featured anime podcast for whenever we do go live. Or if you want to, you can also show us some support and listen to the pre-show like that for the podcast. You can listen to us on patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to the bonus content. And uh, also, uh, we do have some affiliate links and everything like that. If you choose to support us like that, and uh, you can go to Tokyo Treats uh, with the affiliate link that we do have for you in the show notes. Click on that link. Use promo code featured anime. You get five dollars off your first box and it does help support us as well. And it'd be very much appreciated. You can also support us by going to shop.featuredanimepodcast.com. And now... Onto the me and brotatoes. Uh, the cat return came out in July 20, uh, 2002. I was for whatever reason I wanted to say that, but it's 2002. <laughs> it was, uh, it was 2002. 2002. <laughs> it was, a. Uh, it was all produced by the studio, studio Ghibli, a couple producers for it was Disney, at least for the U S portion of it. Uh, genres are adventure, drama, fantasy, and anthro uh, blah, 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 anthropomorphic. Gosh, that was tongue twister for me for whatever reason. Um, so, and it ran for an hour and 15 minutes, roughly, give or take a few minutes. Um, so the cat returns basically starts off with Haru having a hard time getting up out of school. She's kind of meandering through the day being a normal teenage girl where she saves a cat from being hit by a truck details on that to come. Um, as a result, the cat kingdom that this cat is from wants to have her marry the prince of the cats because that's actually who she really saved. And this is her story of going to the cat kingdom, not wanting to go to the cat kingdom and then escaping the cat kingdom with the help of the Baron and, uh, Muta. Yeah. I was gonna say, I thought the Baron was quite the character. I enjoyed it. Um, (laughs) there was a lot going on here. A lot. I wasn't expecting a lot. I liked, but again, it, it was a Ghibli film. So I kind of, I expected to like it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that I was remarking on as my wife and I were watching it, um, Ghibli has a knack for making whatever food they're drawing look amazing, tantalizing all all of it. Yeah. They were eating breakfast, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what that would what that would be like. And then I realized I could never make it look nearly as good as they did. Right. Right. Now, also to kind of help uh, help you all, this is not a Miyazaki film. This is this is not this is. This is it is Studio Ghibli, but it's not by him. So if you're expecting to watch this and get the same feel and vibe as you normally would from all of his other works, you're not going to get that like this to to kind of put put that out there. Typically, when you hear Studio Ghibli, you immediately associate a lot with him Yeah. And, and the story for this, the script, the board, the art, while it is still really good, it's it's uh not to try and shortchange it in any way. This is not him. So the feel you're going to get from this is going to be vastly different from your normal studio Ghibli. Correct. Um, but it makes me kind of curious what the spinoff might be. This is the spinoff. Uh, oh, sorry. What the spinoff is from w- uh, whisper of the heart. So from what I have read, uh, this is a spinoff from a whisper of the heart, which for this one, it actually kind of more focuses in on a minor character from that and, and expands more on that minor character to my okay. understanding. Beyond that, I don't know. I didn't watch the movie. I know <laughs> I have it, but I have not watched it. Oh, okay. Ooh. 
Now, um, did you watch it in sub or dub? I, I watched it subbed and I watched part of it in dub. Okay. So I watched it in dubbed all the way through. It's the only, it's the only one I could find. Um, but one of the things that I found personally to be quite interesting, at least I think, Anne Hathaway voices our main protagonist. Yes. And, and Tim Curry voices the crazed cat king. I, yes. I, I, there, there's, some, there's some major names on this. Yeah, yeah, and, they there are uh, for the English. But but again, you know, I mean, when it's brought to the U.S. and it's a Ghibli and you have the Disney name associated with it, you're going to have that that uh, cast of individuals that are really kind of going with it. Like you have Peter Boyle that does the name, does the voice for Muta, you know, mm-hmm. I couldn't place it, though. I, I, I got to look up Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle, uh, everybody loves Raymond's father. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I remember him from that. I remember him from uh, Young Frankenstein. He's been in a lot of movies. I can see that. He seems like a tough character. Yep. And of course, Muta. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, you had a uh, Carrie Elvis. He did mm-hmm. the voice for the Baron. You know who Carrie El- uh, 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 No, Prince, I don't. Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Wait, the... Yes. As you wish guy. Yeah. No joke. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. did not know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought that I thought the voice sounded familiar. I didn't realize that was his name. Yes. Yeah. No, they Ooh. they did. Uh, Judy Greer did the voice for uh, for Yuki, the white cat with the bow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Judy Greer. Obviously, you, you already mentioned Tim Curry. Like uh, Elliot. uh Gold, he did the voice for the or Tito. Yes, the, the crow. Correct. Yes, Toto, Toto, not Tito, Toto. Toto yeah, yeah. So that uh, makes again, sense. whenever Studio Ghibli is brought to the U.S. and there's an English cast with it, there is uh, there's always a list of A class voice actors that go along with it every every time. Yeah, I guess. Well, no, I mean, like it's it's almost every single time that 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 they're always like that. But that just says like the kind of weight that Ghibli kind of pulls where it warrants that kind of A-list actors where you where you want people that are going to be very recognizable for it, you know? Well, and and every single time it is very evident, like they pull these major names because it's a it's a quality movie. Even if it was just a side spinoff, it had a very remin. It had a very sl- uh, ugh, I promise I can talk. It had a very solid and I believe robust foundation and story. Yes, I mean it. It, it was only what an hour and fifteen minutes, roughly. Yeah, yeah. It felt like a full feature length movie. It, it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. I realize it sounds like. I'm just being very generic, but a lot of the stuff we watch doesn't have that does, does at least not in its entirety. Um, and just the visuals they had the, just the art style from Ghibli. I really enjoy the, the, the story itself is I'm going to say timeless for no other purpose than it's an older movie. And I still feel like it stood up. It stood up to I'm not going to say any movie I've seen in the last year and a half, but pretty close. Like it, w- it wouldn't rank in the top two, but it would rank in the top 10. Uh, I'm just basing it off of quality and visuals. Uh, sure. You don't think well, so? I mean, like for me, like the animation was, was good. However, it wasn't great. And it did not feel like it was something that was drawn in the last, uh, I want to say, 20 years. Because it was drawn, like, produced. Mm -hmm. Came out in 2002. Mm -hmm. It feels older. Is it possible they were going for that art style? Probably. I I agree with you. I I agree with you. That's one of the reasons why I say it feels timeless. It doesn't feel timeless, though. It just feels, to me, honestly, for Ghibli, for how... For as often as I say I love Ghibli, being that it wasn't the normal Ghibli and this the people that did it while they did a great job, it felt lacking personally. Like they they kind of this was not their A-list 
team in terms of art hmm. for me. I personally. guess I can see where you're coming from with that, but I, mm, I don't know. I would have to, I would have to go in depth in my, in my mind to find major flaws where I'd be like, Oh, this isn't, this isn't up to par. Sure. No. Why not? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, if that's what, I mean, like if that's how you, you honestly feel like, kind of like the artwork and, and how the movement is and, and like in general. So like you even take the beginning, right? Normally the, there's a lot more detail or a lot more things that are kind of not shied away from in terms of it. And, and it's a lot cleaner in my eyes. Whereas of when you, when you look at say Haru at the beginning, when she's peeking out, or standing there in front of the cat people, like she looks like she had a black eye. She looks like she got sucker punched in one eye. Ooh, I must have missed that. That's that's why, right? It doesn't have the exact same feel for me. It doesn't have the exact same standard that I'm used to. And then while I'm also watching it, I'm seeing like the Baron, he's he goes into the details about are and having their souls and, and being given a soul when someone puts all their all into it. And I get that. I understand that. And it's great. But at the exact same time, when I'm watching it for the cat kingdom and the, the cats are coming down one, they're walking on their hind legs, which, you know, whatever. But then they're also mm-hmm. acting like they have opposable thumbs, which they don't like some of the right. things they're grabbing okay. or they're carrying. They don't have opposable thumbs. And it, it feels like, even for a fantastical kind of movie such as this, it just feels like it cheapens it all the more because they're, they're trying to make them more human than they are cats. I I suspect they were trying to differentiate regular wild cats to cats that live in this particular society. No. Um, And I, I get that, but at the exact same time, I mean, like if you see a cat that's, walking holding something that you typically would need a thumb to be able to complete the grasp around i mean if you really want to go in like that kind of depth and detail i'm yeah, just they, saying that they, that's, they don't have vocal cords to say anything well as, as well so uh, they they have vocal cords it's just how they choose to utilize those vocal cords is different <laughs> See, i feel you're, like you're doing what i do no, I am just saying like you that argument honestly doesn't hold weight because you can you, I mean like you can go on YouTube and everything else and you can f- hear dogs actually talk or voice words and things like that. It's just that's not how they're able to do it. And for this show that's fine. Like I was totally fine with them talking for the for mm-hmm. for them talking or having their own society and everything like that. But you can tell just from the animation that they're not even liking on them walking on their hind legs. Like you can tell that that is still even foreign to them. I can see. I mean, it's, it's a foreign concept. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I can see where you would say the, uh, the B team came up, came through. Cause the A team, I don't think would have the same difficulties. Let's call it that you're pointing out. Right. Like, I, I feel like there would have been more thought put into it. Like, into them carrying it instead of them looking like they're like grabbing it. They would have like had mm. something else to, to make it a little bit more easier to di- digest, you know, versus yeah, so having a whisk and a bowl and he's able to, to whisk like no issue and problem, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's told, I mean, it's like, okay, okay. But I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from, but, I think I might've been far more immersed in the movie than you were in that point then, because like I didn't question whether or not (laughs) he he found angel cake and he was whipping up some, some topping to distract himself essentially. Yes. I, in my mind, I didn't even occur to me that a cat walking on hind legs, talking and guiding people and things that would be able to be limited to a whisk. But I see your point. There's no opposable thumb. Like the fantastic portion of it was fine, right? It's like I didn't have a problem with it. It was just like some of the interact, some of the, some of it just didn't really kind of play play out the way mentally, you know. But in general, right, you have the story where 
Haru goes and meets the Baron, who is a statue. A or figurine a f- brought to life. Yeah. Figurine brought to life because he has a spirit, and a soul himself. And I love how he graciously approaches each situation with like a cool collected head. It's like, oh, well, oh, absolutely. It's like the cla- cats come in there. They start, they knock her down and start carrying her out of the building. And he's like, well, so much for cake and tea. And he's like, let's go. Just like, <laughs> all ma- as a matter of fact, like, let's, let's do this guys. Come on. You know, I kind of, I, I figured when they were talking about how things have spirits and thing and, and if you believe enough and all that stuff, it gives it its own life. I figured they would go much further with that than they did. Who knows? Maybe in the primary movie that that's a, that's a larger point, but I feel like there was so much potential there that could have been. Yes. Like I, I feel like there was a, and, and you know, I feel like that's probably where not watching it out of watching it, watching a whisper of the heart first really comes into play. Hmm. You know, is the fact that he they probably do go into more detail. I have no idea if they do, but I'm hoping that they do, you know. <laughs> well, I, I suspect it was it was mainly my fault or my uh my lack of forethought that brought us to this particular juncture, if you will, where we're guessing as to what could have been in the primary where it, there is maybe no way they didn't show up here. No, there's no way in hell you could have known about any of that. Like we literally, it was just random choices. Like, hey, this is what we're rolling with, and we're going, we're going with it, uh, <laughs> which is fine. You know, it's okay. I mean, th- things happen. Things happen. It's okay. But well, I mean, even by itself, it's a really happy. I'm not going to say happy go lucky, but it's it's a happy story that teaches you to believe in yourself. It's got a good moral. Um, I'm not going to say compass because that's not the right word, but it has a good moral premise to it. And <laughs> it, it kind of played on my love of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z because I could have sworn for the first two or three minutes, the love interest was named Vegeta. Vegeta. Obviously, it's not, but um, I, I was distracted by that. Um, but our main character goes from a happy go lucky, I'll do whatever you need, I can be whatever you want very whimsical <laughs> to oh God. TJ, TJ says no, no wonder Rick likes it this is believe it Ghibli Ghibli oh, Naruto no, no I, I didn't even mention Naruto oh jeez to course. be fair CJ to be fair uh, it should be Ghibli Boruto oh but that is beside the you point know, it's, it's, it's getting late bro I just, uh, just getting real tired over here yeah, that's okay. No, CJ, uh, are you free? I mean, like, you want to drop <laughs> drop in? Oh, jeez. No, it's... <laughs> it is one of those things you got to believe in yourself. It shows growth. It shows everything that you would hope for. You better believe in it. In a good movie. God, oh, jeez. One minor mistake, and it goes series-wide. I'm, I'm just saying, like, believe... No. No, it's a bad translation... Of a beloved show. You know, we already talked about this once a, before, and we don't an need a nation of mm-hmm. a sequel. So you're saying uh, and and to be fair, we will be happy to go into details again about oh, it. No, 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 oh, no, no need. No, no, no. Okay. Are you sure? Are you sure? No, this, because yeah, I can send you yeah. all the reference material and everything like that to help support the believe it portion the lies. of it. The yeah. lies. Mm-hmm. All lies. Mm-hmm. Anyways. As you were saying about uh, <laughs> the cat returns to the Leaf yes. Village. God. Yes. I've completely lost my train of thought. It's so frustrating. I'm not even going to lie. Like I saw so, uh, my distaste for Baruto is 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 powerful. irrelevant of the conversation. That's that's where it, what you it keep is. bringing it up. I did not bring up Baruto. I, I made one Uh-oh. reference to oh. it. Yeah, uh-huh. which means you brought it up. Reference to it. You uh, keep that's bringing it up. You keep going back to it. I only said no, 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 it no. once. Uh huh. Because like, you knew you get this reaction. You knew it. You did that smile the on your face. Returns. Uh huh. The cat returns. 
Uh huh. Just okay. saying. No, 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 no subtitles after that. Okay. Uh. Anyway, yes, Jabot the cat returns. <laughs> See? See? Just play. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think you I'm are. Sorry. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, let's not say who brought up what or who loves uh-huh. Boruto or not. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. If, uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. not... <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay, TJ, any... you did this. This is you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop uh, for real. I'll stop for real. Okay, uh-huh. I promise. Uh-huh. I promise. Uh-huh. You're good. Uh-huh. You're good. For realsies. For realsies. Sure. For realsies. For realsies. <laughs> I promise. Believe it. Jeez. Okay. So, at risk of repeating myself and and starting this whole process all over again, I promise, man. Believe it. Don't worry. <laughs> it's good. Oh, it's good. <sighs> Our main protagonist goes from a pushover to somebody who will stand up for herself and not pine after somebody. Yes, because before she was going to go after the guy that sounds like Vegeta. And at the end of it, she's like, ah, I I don't need him anymore. I'm, I'm good on my own. Yeah, because she has a crush on the Baron. She's totally smitten with someone else. That's the only reason why. And here's the other problem with it, right? Here's the other problem with the issue that I'm having one, it seems like there's probably a time skip, but there's, uh, but they don't really show that there's a time skip and her length of hair constantly changes throughout the movie. And at the end it's even shorter. Okay. So the consistency just wasn't there. I guess I can see a time skip happening there. I didn't really think too much on that, but I just, hmm. Maybe I just assumed that the timeline hadn't been manipulated at all. Yeah. 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 That's uh, kind of how, how it goes, man. Yeah. Any user. I don't have too much more to say about it. Look, man, we just have nothing but love for you, Rick. Really, we mm-hmm. do. We do. Seeing another mm-hmm. media in. Uh-huh, yeah, I knew, I knew it. I knew it. I read it. I was going to ignore it. <laughs> uh. BJ just keeps going on. It's awesome. It's amazing for all those who don't join us live. Really, honestly, it's it's usually worth it, especially for a situation such as this. It's oh yeah, amazing, totally, totally amazing. Um, <laughs> oh god, uh, that's a lie. That's a lie. You like me way more than Baruto. Anyways, anyways, to to try and bring us back on track uh, again. Uh, the show, the movie, honestly, was still really good. It was well, it's well worth the watch, even for just once. However, the, you know, the discrepancies for the for how she acts, it's understandable. But at the exact same time, it's kind of aggravating to me. So when she at the beginning, she's doesn't want to be dragged off to this fantasy world or anything like that. Then she gets to the fantasy world. She's there for two minutes and in that time frame, she's like, I love this place. This is great. We don't need to leave or this or that or anything else. And then she goes to, I want to leave to back to, I don't want to leave or maybe it won't be that bad or it will be that bad type of thing. And she keeps flip flopping mm. all the way through the entire main predicament. You know? Yeah, I can see that. I, I felt like at the beginning when she went through all those changes and whatnot, she was very cat-like, which is why she ended up gaining the cat-like characteristics. So that that was my thought process. And then the growth I saw from being whimsical to like everything shiny, distracted everywhere, to more focused, more self-assured, went back to being human, that kind of thing. That that's what I thought. Well, the reason why she went back to being human represented that. The, no, the reason why she went back to being human was because she left the cat castle or cat world had nothing to do with her. She had, already started reverting in no. the, while she was there. No, she didn't. She did. She lost the whiskers when she was yelling at the cat king. I, I, I promise you she did not revert at all. OK, maybe I saw it wrong, but I finished watching it like an hour and a half before we started streaming. That tells like, me I'm, absolutely nothing because we know how you are. That tells me uh, <laughs> absolutely nothing because while she was with the cat king and everything like that, she grew her whiskers. She didn't revert her whiskers. Well, technically, she didn't grow them till 
Well, no, she uh, until she met him after the changing, after she got greedy and stuff like that. No, she she grew the whiskers while she was eating, not when she was greedy. While she was eating, and she was trying to starting to resign herself to the fact that she was there. Mm. And and Yuki even says she can still turn back to being human if she leaves before dawn. Had it said yes, that, that would that would make things permanent. Yeah, but she she has a chance to go back to being human if she goes back before dawn leaves before dawn and the whole thing about her continually changing is because she is struggling with whether or not she wants to uh, stay there or, or not, whether she's accepting her fate or not. I guess I can see that, but I honestly don't have too much more. I could really say about it. What about you, sir? I don't other than my thoughts on, well, we've already talked about, but yeah, I feel like that would just be going around in circles. Right. So, All right. So I on believe, a uh, scale of up to 10, sir, how would you rate it? On a scale of up to 10, I would give this a solid eight. I think it's worth the watch. I don't know that I'd want to watch it more than once. Um, maybe if I watched the, the pre spinoff and then I'd watch this again, but honestly, probably not. I think it's good for one main watch. And what about you? I give it a six. Oh, so just barely tolerable. I give it a six. It's fine. I wouldn't watch it. I really, I mean, it's, I would not want to watch it again, but if my wife watched it, uh, and wanted, or let me rephrase it. If she wanted to watch it, I would not say no to it. That's about it. But the reason why I say that is because she would watch it mainly because it deals with cats and she loves cats. That's, that's about it. I mean, like, honestly, I don't have much more beyond that. I mean, like it was okay. Uh, so yeah, next week we're going to watch the pre spinoff, the original whisper of the heart, <laughs> try and get Sounds ourselves good. back on track. <laughs> uh, blue Chi says, uh, blue, uh, says it's a lot like whiskered away. Definitely like kind of like that. Uh, it's good for one watch and that's about it. Not, not much more beyond that. Um, mm. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. I uh, hope, hope you uh, enjoyed this week's choice. Uh, if you feel like we've got something right, something wrong, did it too much justice, not enough justice, or anything like that, feel free to let us know. Reach out to us. Uh, all our contact information and everything like that is on our website, featuredanimepodcast.com. Uh, if you want to listen to the pre- or post-show that we usually do with every episode and you don't want to join us live, you can go to patreon.com slash featuredanimepodcast. A dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. And if you want uh, to help support us, we do have a bunch of affiliate links and everything like that in the show notes for you. And again, we are uh, partnered up right now with uh, Tokyo Treats. So if you go to Tokyo Treats using the link in our show notes and use a promo code featured anime, you get five dollars off your first box from Tokyo Treats. And I can promise you from receiving their boxes and having their delicious treats. It is well worth it. I'm looking forward to next month's. This month's is a uh, Mount Fuji snack venture. It is deliciousness all across the board. Um, and until next time, I'm Jack. I'm Rick. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>